Hi, my name's Adam. I'm a journalist, now at New Scientist, used to be at The Guardian, soon at The Times. My job is inherently about uncertainty. The job of a reporter is to go and find out what's happening in the world. By definition, it's not always certain what we'll find. For me, that's the joy of the job, not being certain about what you'll discover on any given day. To give you an idea of what I mean, I'm going to take you back in time to the 19th of July, 2018. At the time, there was a lot of debate in the UK about switching to electric cars. Now, one of the big uncertainties was how to charge them away from people's homes. The government had an electric car plan out called Road to Zero, and we decided to take it literally and hit the road to see what charging is really like. Now, I generally thought electric cars were inevitable. I was quite positive about them. Some of my colleagues were quite skeptical, but I had no idea what the charging infrastructure was like across the UK. So I set out to drive in a day from Brighton to Edinburgh. Whisper it, it was actually from Lewis. The idea was to sample different charger types rather than just drive in a straight line using Tesla's dedicated network. Now, there was a lot of uncertainty in this journey. I wasn't even sure how long it would take because different chargers take different times to top up the car. The first charge I visited at a Shell petrol station, very glamorously, didn't work. There was a helpline, they couldn't help. The garage staff, they couldn't help. So I set off uncertain about the car's range. My next bout of uncertainty ended with the equivalent of a sat-nav guiding you into a lake. I don't know if you've ever done that and followed a sat-nav literally. That's because the maps and the postcodes weren't perfect for chargers back then. They weren't even on Google Maps like they are today. So I ended up down a long, dusty dirt road in Doncaster with no charger. It wasn't that dramatic. I did find it eventually. The worst bit probably was when I was in Berwick-upon-Tweed, low on charge, and I was pretty tired because it was late in the day. I spent about half an hour searching for a charger that was reportedly in a maternity ward car park. I found it thanks to some very kind old ladies in the area. Unfortunately, the app didn't work. The out of hours helpline went through to several people who couldn't help. This is starting to sound familiar, isn't it? They offered a mobile number, which promptly went to voicemail. So I ended up in Edinburgh at shortly before 10 p.m., having left the house about 5.30 in the morning. I had 72 miles left for the return journey the next day. The punchline was that the hotel's single charging space had been blocked by a big diesel car. Now, for me, this journey was a real eye-opener. You needed a ridiculous amount of apps. Contactless payments hardly worked for any of these different charging networks. It's a different story on that today. The number of broken or unsupported charges was a real issue. That's also improved judging from the data that the networks publish. Now, the uncertainty in this case was fine for me. That's because of the nature of my job. Even if the journey was bad and annoying for me to experience on the day, I knew it would make for good copy in the story. Now, the ad hoc nature of the trip, I made quite a lot of it up as I went along, meant I bumped into lots of other electric car drivers to hear their experiences. In parallel, I did the same thing online, live tweeting the journey. And the more people I spoke to, the more the uncertainty faded away. And it became clear that public charging for electric cars was very much a work in progress. I don't know if you've ever tried a beta test, an early version of software, but it, it felt like that. It was buggy. It wasn't ready for mass consumption for people like my mum and dad. I was also uncertain as to how the story would be received when it was published. In the event, I got it in the net from both sides, from electric car critics who said I'd effectively cheated by using a long range Tesla, to evangelists of electric cars who said I'd gone out of my way to find bad chargers. And that's usually a sign I can be pretty certain I've ended up in the right place.